I'm Pastor Brett here at Georgetown Lutheran with this week's Lenten conversation video. But you'll notice it's just me. And I want to be real with you about why I didn't choose to invite someone else into conversation this week and share with you my own thoughts and then maybe challenge you and invite you into some reflection of your own. You see, this week in the Lenten devotional cards um, from this Bless Our Mess uh devotional that we're following, it takes a real departure. And after the weeks um, before and after that are kind of more general about introspection and reflection um, and different practices, this week is different. It's on a specific topic, and that topic is racism. And it challenges us and asks you very specific things, including in this week's tea conversation questions. And it feels a little like a big switch between the rhythm that this devotional has had for the previous weeks. And so as I looked at these questions, I've been praying about them the last couple weeks and thinking about who could I invite to have this conversation that wouldn't feel too vulnerable or performative or put someone else on the spot or invite a person of color to have a conversation about racism before doing the work myself or that would kind of allow us in without. Yeah, so all of that felt a little off and I thought maybe this is work that I need to do myself and that we as a congregation certainly are called to do more work on this, to make this a part of our broader conversation of what it means to be people of God and proclaim the gospel by speaking against all the things that defy God, including racism and hatred in all its forms. So, um, this week, I hope you will flip through this week's devotional cards, which each, um, like, might call you out a little bit. And that, oh, I was going to say that it might seem like a real departure for this week, and then I realized that these cards, this devotional curriculum was written for first use in Lent of 2021, 2021, three years ago, because we're on that three-year cycle. And um, that means that these were written at the end of 2020. And if we think about where we were collectively in 2020, that the paint was still fresh on Black Lives Matter Square downtown in our city, that we were having much more communal conversations about these things, saying the names of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and doing work. And three years later, I have to say that perhaps we need to confess that we've let those conversations quiet. And so now when it comes up in the middle of this um, devotional series, it feels like, whoa, whoa, we weren't talking about that. Whereas three years ago, it felt like so much more of um, the topic of the day. Racism hasn't gone away, though, as we continue to see. And perhaps um, in addition to particularly reflecting on and thinking about um, racism in the form of Well, we'll see as what comes up for you as you think about these cards and devotional questions. But now in this context, now perhaps you also think of um, different forms of racism, hatred, anti-Semitism, and the like that um, are tied to current events that we're experiencing here in 2024. So I want to be honest with you. That didn't feel good to invite somebody else. And instead, I want to challenge you to look at these questions and to maybe watch a video, read something, do something, and then have the conversation with somebody else. Tell somebody else about what you read. Don't let it, yes, we, especially as white people, have to do the self-work, but we also need to not just keep it inside, but to share about it, just like the gospel we're called to proclaim. So this week, I have been re-watching the ELCA's Talks at the Desk video series. You can Google it. I'll put a little link up here and in the description 
Talks at the Desk. It's a Black History Month um, production from our denomination where they've made these beautiful videos profiling um, Black Lutheran leaders, communities, congregations, and um, powerful people who, sadly, in our heavily majority white denomination, um, have had some different experiences or simply have wisdom to share. And I think uh, we're called to lean into that. And so while um, it is no longer February, y'all, we can still um, pick up these things, these resources, lean again, in again and listen. Um, and I think it's really a valuable use of your time. So I commend those to you. And I'm going to, you know, uh, be a little vulnerable and go first and share about these tea questions. And then maybe it'll inspire you to think about what your honest responses are to them, to um, start a conversation with someone else about them, and to really think on it as well. The first week, the first um, question this week is, what's your earliest memory of being aware of racism? What comes to mind for you? For me, I grew up outside of Richmond, Virginia, capital of the Confederacy. My parents were both New Englanders um, who had recently moved there. And I remember being a small girl and being in and around a couple antique shops in our rural small town area and seeing the Confederate flag. This was before I was school age even and asking my mom about them and seeing those and other memorabilia of segregation and the Confederacy in our antique stores and proudly hung was a part of the background that I grew up with. I remember asking my mom about the Confederate flag and I don't really remember exact conversations from when I was that little, but I remember her telling me that it was from this war, but it, that it really was from a time that where we did not treat everyone equal. And that particularly black people were segregated, were treated, and that, that the Confederate flag does have this link to slavery. And so I appreciate my mom and my dad having conversations like that with me growing up. Some of you may um, know that I'm named from a Civil War novel and um, and so that's a part of my story as well, but that's a longer story. And I think part of my, yeah, there lots of childhood things come up for me. My parents got me black baby dolls that I played with without explanation or needing one. Um, and I lamented that a close friendship of mine from elementary school, we grew apart as we got older. And I think that there were racial differences, even more than class, that started to divide us as we grew. The second question is, Talk about a time when you or someone else said or did something racist. Did you interrupt it? Did you speak up? Why or why not? It's hard for me to think of a specific one situation. I can think of a number of times where I've awkwardly blundered or put my foot in my mouth or in looking back done something that categorized someone. Something that um, the ELCA's Talks at the Desk videos really highlight a couple different, in a few different people's stories, is one of the ways in which we do this 
Um, and I have done this, and it's a racist thing because it's about an assumption based on color, is when someone work, walks into our worship space who is non-white, if we assume that they are not of a Lutheran background, or even like in these videos, black Lutheran clergy talk about being asked, when did you convert? And that's not a question that I get as a white woman in our church. I think I've often been timid to correct that instinct or others in others, though I certainly have noticed it and learned it and tried to curb it in myself. I think that this question really calls us to think about the times that we've spoken up and why or why not. The last question is, is there anything you haven't done yet, no matter how large or small, that you are willing to do to help end racism? If so, what is it? And what plan can you make to start? What is on your heart? What little one step can you take? For me, part of it has been about my charitable giving. That's something that I'm interested in this year and thinking about how I um, steward the resources that I have and can be um, anti-racist and uh, equitable in how I share them. One little step could even be watching that video, a video or sharing something or even just thinking about these questions because perhaps it could be how God is continuing to mold your heart um, as we are preparing to be led again into the passion story. So next week I'll be back with another conversation with multiple GLC members. Um, but thanks for listening today and joining me on this Lenten journey.